Hey, welcome back. This is Everyone Loves Pirates. And once again, we have our Let's Play Let's Learn of Crusader Kings 2. And what we've done in the last episode is we looked at the lands we had won. We made our vassals like us a little more. We improved our council. Now we have some pretty good people on our council, thanks to our new mayor and our new bishop, our new court chaplain now, because he was a new bishop. We've also put our second son in line for these bishoprics. So when, when the next time one of these guys die, our second son will be out of our inheritance line. He'll become a bishop and he can't inherit our land, which is good because he's lousy. I don't like him at all. Look at those stats. That's horrible. Slothful, craven, ugh, chaste even. We made him chaste. So if we died right now, our heir here, our oldest son, would get Dublin. Our, well... Unless he becomes bishop, our youngest son will get killed there when this guy becomes bishop and he's out of the, the line to inherit. And this is a guy I actually really want to play as. And we'll talk about ways that we can get rid of our sons. Though I think the best way to just make sure that we play as the people we want to play is to change to elective monarchy. But I'm going to wait until people like us more for reals, for good. Because um, then, because everyone's going to hate us when we change the succession law. Like, quite a bit. And especially our old eldest son. So I'm going to start it going again. We are going at speed 3. We are waiting for the event. Well, really, we want to improve our stewardship, so I'm hoping for that event. But we also started a feast, so the, the feast events will happen soon. But, here we go. We also chose to be the guardian for our youngest son. Not because our stats were very good. Unfortunately, we're not going to be the greatest guardian for him. How old is he now? He's 15. So we need to make sure we change him over before he turns 16. I'll talk again about why we do that just real quick. But if you're wondering, it's in one of the videos. Uh, why I think it's video 2 talks about uh, guardians and why you choose people for particular reasons. But since we are his guardian now, he does various little things throughout his life. And we get to parent him. So... Our son, Don Chad, says, These peasants we have are all mine to command like little slaves, right? That's right, child, we could tell him. And there's a 50% chance he'll become arbitrary. There's a 40% chance he'll become cruel. And a 10% chance he'll become proud. And we can mouse over these and see what each do. Arbitrary is a horrible, 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 horrible stat to have as a leader. Your vassals hate it when you're arbitrary. Cruel is actually not that bad. Cruel is kind of actually, in a way, uh, I'm not a cruel person, but it's kind of fun to play as a cruel character. And and just to say, I usually play this game, I'm not going to play this playthrough this way, but I usually play it um, as a role-playing game. I, I like to play my characters and play their roles the way they are. I just find that more interesting. Um but I won't do that for you because we get not we need to get certain things into this. I'll do some things that I normally wouldn't do uh, just so you can see how to do various different things. Uh, but it gives you uh, more morale damage in fights. But you also get the chance to like torture your prisoners and stuff and get the impaler trade. And there's there's some cool stuff about being cool. I don't mind cool. Proud, I don't mind either. The church doesn't like it, but you get a little extra prestige. You basically get six prestige per year, which isn't horrible. But arbitrary is horrible, and I actually would like to play as this guy, and I don't want him to become arbitrary. So we can say, that's it. You're under curfew, young man. Go to your room. Don't play with your, I don't know, sticks? <laughs> Whatever toys boys had back in the uh, 1070s. And there's an 80% chance he'll become Roth and a 20% chance he'll become Proud. Once again, I don't mind Proud. I actually really don't mind Roth that much. It hurts your diplomacy and your intrigue because you're just irate. You can't control your temper. But the Marshal's pretty good. And it's nowadays, in, in the current version of Crusader Kings 2, it is not bad to have high Marshal skill. So we'll do that. As you can see, he got Roth and his stats changed accordingly. Okay. Let's keep going. We will have that feast uh, probably in the next month or so. This is the last thing we have to choose. The best part about preparing a feast is deciding what food stuff to serve. I must purchase venison, boar, and duck, spices, wine, and ale, honey for the desserts, cheeses, and perhaps even a swan or a peacock. 
Mmm, I love a good peacock. Wait, um, anyways, I don't know, do people eat peacock, or is this just to have swans and peacocks, like, wandering around as, like, entertainment? I don't know. I would like to try peacock, or even swan. Uh, I love duck. Duck is amazing. Oh, duck, so good. Anyways, I can spend lavishly on food, which will cost me 4.11 gold. I will spend enough on food to satisfy everyone's hunger. Or I don't want to spend very much on food. I believe what you choose can determine your um, your characteristics. It can give you, a, can potentially make you into something. Uh, we're humble. We are temperate. I believe I've never actually done it, but I've heard um, if you just do the spend enough option enough, you get a chance where you might become temperate. Um, you know everything in moderation. But uh, since we already have that, I don't need to worry about that. I want to make sure my guests are happy, and I will spend lavishly on food. Hopefully I won't turn myself into a glutton. I don't know if that is a possibility, but it sounds like it could be. Most of the preparations for the feast have been made. Now I only have to send out the invitations. And then we, can, we invite all of our vassals. We have four of them. Two mayors, two bishops. And they will possibly come. Hopefully they will. We can look. Yeah, I think they all like us enough to come. The guests have arrived. So we would have had pop-ups saying, yeah, I can't make it. And then we'd say, I hate you. Oh, I'm going to go cry. It was just basically what it says. The guests have finally arrived. All is ready. The cooks have worked day and night preparing the food. The castles never look lovelier. Welcome to my feast. We greet all of our vassals. What's this feast going to get us? Well, as we're holding the feast, we're getting a little prestige each month. But when we finish, we're going to get a massive boost to our diplomacy and everyone in the world on top of that will like us and will have a little modifier on their opinions for had a feast. And we'll see that soon when this finishes. So Mayor Rowan spoke up and told everyone how great the food was at my feast. That's why we spent so much. I was really glad someone was kind enough to say something nice about the food, given how hard I had worked to ensure the food was the best part of the feast. And I did. That was well spoken. Thank you, Mayor Rowan. Our opinion of Mayor Rowan changes by 25 for two years. We like him more. Now, you might think, this is kind of weird. Why does it matter how much we like our vassals? I mean, yeah, we could role play and do stuff to them depending on how much our character says he likes him. Uh, that 25 hasn't been added on yet, but it will be when we unpause. But it's interesting because at some point we may be the liege to someone else and we'll be invited to his feast and we may do something stupid, speak up about the food or get drunk or something and that will change how much our liege now likes us. So we're just on the other side of it. It really doesn't mean too much to us as the liege but if we had a liege over us it, it, can, it can be really interesting to be on the other side of some of these events. So it is kind of cool to play as a lowly, lowly peon sometimes. Oh no, he's a drunkard. Man, no wonder you suck with uh, stewardship. Okay, well, I'm glad he didn't get drunk. He may still get drunk and we'll end up liking him less because of that. Um, oh, sorry, our opinion of him. Huh, I was looking at the wrong thing. So, here we go. So, we're happy with him. That's where that plus 25 went. We're happy because he said nice things. But we don't like him because he's proud and we're humble, and he's gluttonous and we're temperate. Um, so we still have a negative modifier of him. Shouldn't be negative 14, though. That math doesn't add up. Maybe it'll change soon. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I just clicked on it. Uh, someone, I think, said that they really liked uh, the entertainment. And we got a, a, a modifier with them or them with us because of it. So here's what happens. Everyone had fun. Great. Doesn't matter. Either way, we get this fabulous feast. So we get plus five diplomacy. Our lousy diplomacy score here. Right? Oh, so we got the entertaining entertainment from that previous. Someone really liked our entertainment, so we got plus two diplomacy for a while just for the entertainment. When we unpause, this is going to go from 11 to 16. So, like, having a feast, you can see why sometimes I like to have a feast, like, every year. Because... One, everyone's going to like us a lot more based on our diplomacy score going up plus five. But they're also going to like us more because general opinion, just everyone in the entire world likes us a little bit more because we have gave 
four people some duck and boar. It's kind of weird, but that's how it works. So let's look at this dude, right? This uh, bishop that hardly liked us at all before we put him on our council. So he likes us based on our diplomacy score, the ambitions that we've uh, fulfilled, uh, something that he improves approves of, so on and so forth. And that entertaining entertainment plus two down there. We'll click here. Let this update. So we also get plus five for fabulous feasts. But that personal diplomacy score, I forget what it was now, but it certainly went up quite a bit as well. So now if we look at our vassals, now everyone likes us quite a bit. I mean, we're almost close to Pope-like now. And this guy that liked us five when he first came to be our vassal now likes us 77. And we didn't even give him a gift. Of course, a lot of this stuff will go away. And we can always see how long it lasts just by clicking on us and seeing... Uh, entertaining entertainment will last for till September and the fabulous feast will last for a year which is why you want to have them going all the time so this ends on March 6 and we could have another one if we really needed it in um, November the following year or we could wait till December again once again it probably doesn't matter if you wait till this December 31st but I like to poachers have been seen in Dublin so I should probably send my spy master row in and my marshal, Ingarund, to investigate the matter. They have more important things to do. If that happens, I get the merciful trait for a couple months, which gives us a little more prestige and we lose a little intrigue. Or we can eliminate the poachers. Um, let's see, maybe we can roleplay this one. Well, we're temperate and humble. We're a little martial. I don't really know what our guy would do about this. I, I feel like since he's trying to consolidate power and get more power to himself, he would probably be kind of mad about these poachers. They'll be eliminated. Hopefully we didn't get our awesome council members killed. Ingar caught two young poachers in my forest with a couple of dead rabbits on their belt and a live one in a stare. Deal with them yourself. We got five prestige. He caught some as well. We get five more prestige. I think we got it. Maybe they got him. Yeah, they got it. But it said gain. When it doesn't say a character's name, it means us. Well, we have the clock moving, and hopefully some things will happen. Um, I want to talk about things over here. So when specific events of interest happen, they will show up either in this tab or the low priority tab. Or if they're really important, they'll pop up. We'll get a pop-up. We can go back and we can look at these. They disappear after a while, but we can click on the open open the list of messages and see what's happened lately. Uh, it talks about how we gave away the ma minor title and that this character died. We can also change what happens here uh, just by hitting escape and going to message settings. And we can choose all... Basically, they've done pretty good where you can choose most of the notifications and change you know whether you see them at all you know you can you can disable them you can have them either pop up or go to a different tab um, and you can also do that based on whether they are close to you they're part of like your dynasty you set them manually as special interests so like our son here or just kind of just general characters of interest uh, another option you have besides these two windows to know what's going on in the world is here, this plus symbol. It starts closed. I like having it open usually just because I like just seeing what's going on in the world. This gives you pretty much just kind of everything that's going on. It's a lot of info. You don't need to know most of it. But we can see kind of what's going on in Scotland and other things around us. It can be kind of neat to have up, especially when nothing of interest is really going on. You're just killing time. Okay. Our court chaplain is idle. Why is that? Oh, because he's new and we never gave him a job. Let's do that. So that's another good reason to just look over here occasionally. And don't let me forget that we need to change our son before he turns 16. Okay, so I, the best thing probably to do with him right now, we've talked about this before, is I just want to improve relations with my bishops. I mean, it's, it's a long road to hoe. 
Uh, they, this guy likes the Pope 100%, so we'd have to make him dislike the Pope some and like us more. Um, our court chaplain actually only likes the Pope 95, so we can send him to go talk to himself for a while and convince himself to like us more. I always, I always like doing that. Uh, in order to do that, we can just click on him. We can right-click on him and go to character. Uh, we can also just click on his portrait and see where he is. He's in Dublin because he's our... Um, he's just in our court because he's our court chaplain. Interestingly enough, um, I think we, we don't want to send him to Dublin because then he's going to talk to the other bishop. We want to send him to where you know his actual bishopric is. So we're going to go here to his bishopric. And it highlights Kildare. So we will send him to improve religious relations in Kildare. I'm going to stop explaining this a whole lot in the future, but for the first few times, I'll, I'll give you the thought process of why I'm doing things so you can follow along. If you don't know what the council does, I believe that was episode two. Check the description um, to make sure, but council, yeah, I'm pretty sure the council was explained in episode two. Another thing we might want to do, I've talked about it before, but we never got around to doing it, is we can conduct diplomacy. We can look at the people in our court. Actually, I'm going to show you an interesting way to do this. We can. What I'm thinking about is we need to start marrying some people in our court. Just get their opinion up because a lot of people want to get married. We can go to arrange marriage, click on this, and just see who can be married. And that's a great way to do it if that's all you're interested in. And we can see we got a couple decent characters. I I I won't marry people that are useless like this second son of ours, because I really don't want to fill up my court with people who have bad stats. Um, Engine-wise, this is an interesting thing. Our People in our court are less likely to have babies the more and more people are in our court. So if you're trying to do a little eugenics thing and breed, you know, future council members and other, you know, just even, you know, heirs and other people in your dynasty and so on and so forth, you don't want tons of people in your court. So you don't want just random people popping out babies because they're kind of using up slots that other people can use. Not that you'll stop having babies entirely, but you'll have a lot less. I just say it keeps the game from bloating up too much. And it's probably not a bad idea. But, you know, when you do have characters that have like an 18 martial skill, you might want to get them married so that you can have some good people to lead your armies in the future. So uh, just while we're here, I'm going to do that. I'm going to marry our one woman that we have to our marshal. Why not? Now the interesting thing about marriage is it's a great way to bring in awesome female characters to your court who wouldn't just accept an invitation to your court. And we got plenty of guys, so I don't mind doing this. Uh, a lot of times I'll leave my courtiers that I already have in my court for a while for a rainy day when I really need someone just immediately. But um, yeah, we'll do that. Now since they were both in my court, they cannot refuse. So a lot of times I will keep females in my court if they're of a great house. And I will I won't marry them until what and it's probably no reason there's probably no good reason to do this, but I just like doing it. It it makes me happy. But I'll invite like that Marshall, for instance, was is not Irish. Right? He is um he's Frankish. So what I like to do is if I had a noble woman, now this one was lowborn, so I couldn't have done it because he's of a, a great house. But if I have a woman who's also of a great house, I can marry her matrilineally to these foreigners and make sure that all the children are of her dynasty so that they're basically, they stay within the Irish houses. And I just like the idea of kind of killing off their, either their dynasty totally or their branch of their dynasty. You came to my court you're going to lose your identity. You're gonna, your your family is now this this lady's family. I, I don't know why. It just it makes me happy to do that. Uh, let's uh, keep going. Unpause. I don't want to be interrupted with really cool stuff while I'm prattling on about things. So what I wanted to show you also was in the People Finder. Luckily, this is a, a new game. So I don't have to reset all this. But this basically defaults to showing you everybody. So we can search everybody in our court. And just 
we can search by various things, but I just kind of want to look down the line and see not only people who want to get married, but I want to see what other ambitions they have. I mean, maybe one of their ambitions is to become king of Ireland, you know, should maybe we were getting close to doing that. Now I know, oh, well, this guy may want to hurt me or something. I'm um, pause real quick. It looks like Kaiser Heinrich Funft. Ein, zwei, drei, fünf, yeah. Of the Holy Roman Empire has set up Pope Hermanfried, 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 sorry, as an anti pope named Pope uh, Vitalian II. We can look at the religion screen and see that there is an anti pope now. And what this does, it's not really all that important right now, but since it happened, I'll explain it. This is hurting the moral authority of the Catholic faith. This is making the Catholic faith weaker because we aren't all under the same pope. There's now this other pope that's going to vie for power and probably try to become the actual real pope. What this means now, though, is that the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire doesn't... He's not under this pope. He's under the anti-pope who he put in power, who likes him quite a bit. And basically, he, he has his own puppet pope, probably. And he doesn't have to worry about getting excommunicated by the other pope if the other pope really didn't like him. Uh, it's an interesting move. He's content. Weird that he would put in power an anti-pope when he's content. But now, all of his vassals, we look at his church vassals, they hate the pope and love him. And actually, of course, this guy does because that's the anti-pope that he made. But now... You can see that they're loyal to him instead of the Pope. It's just it's a it's a way to deal as a Catholic to get out from underneath the Pope if he's making things difficult difficult for you. I've actually never messed with the anti Pope mechanic myself. I always find it crap, we forgot. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Somehow he became This is not the right child, is it? Our nephew. Oh crap, but our son is right behind him. They were both born on January 1st. Oh, he also became a misguided warrior because he's under us. Oh, what a horrible, horrible thing we've done. Oh, that's a... Oh, man. I'm bad at this even when I'm not preoccupied with a lot of other stuff. I wish there was a way that you could just set the game to, like, pause at a certain time. Oh, well. Uh, this is where someone might be might want to save scum. I'm not going to do it, obviously. So we have, unfortunately, we could have got this guy better stats, but hey, what the heck? It happens. We'll deal with it. So, yeah, I've never really messed with anti popes. I'm gonna check the time real quick. Um, this probably isn't a bad time to stop. Uh, I'm sorry if that jitters the video out really bad. I probably need to just set a timer on my phone or something. But um, This is a good place to stop here. Pause the game with Spacebar. And uh, just thank you again for watching these videos. Once again, give me some input about what you think. Let me know if there's anything I, I could change or should change. Or if, I, if you have some information that I'm wrong about or that I didn't have, uh, feel free to share it. I don't know everything to know about this game. I've got about 300 hours into it, There's, but there's people out there that probably put 1,000 hours into this game, maybe more. Uh, so I'm not the end-all, be-all. I don't, I don't go on the forums hardly at all and just kind of read about the mechanics of the game. This is mostly through playing and a couple... I'll watch a couple Let's Plays as well just because I enjoy this game a lot and I like to watch other people's stories unfold as well. So thanks again. I look forward to seeing you all later.